Yes, good morning everybody. This is Brahma Jaiswal. Once again, I am with Merchant of Venice, Act 1, Scene 2. Shakespeare has introduced this uh, house of Portia that is in Belmont and this is an introductory part to the next plot of the play. Uh, this begins the uh, introduction of Portia and how his father has derived his will and how many suitors had, have come from the four corners of the world. So let's see, Portia and Nerissa are the main characters in this one. So, by my troth, Nerissa, my little body is weary of this great world. That means, uh, weary means tired. Nerissa, you would be sweet, madam, if your miseries were in the same abundance as your good fortune. Means you would be, she says that uh, if your miseries were in that same quantity as your uh, <coughs> good fortunes are. For aught I see they are sick, those people are sick who have plenty and those are who doesn't have sufficient enough, they starve for nothing. Without having anything, they do starve. So, it is better, it is no mean happiness, it is always better to remain in the midway, neither too much nor too less. That is the sense of no mean happiness, therefore to be seated in the mean. Means if you are in mean position, you are in a better position. Superfluity comes sooner, superfluity means excess, superfluous, uh, comes sooner by white hair. Huh? The man who has too much. Uh, obviously, a uh, grows white hair means they become older earlier rather than those who have sufficient enough, they live longer. Now, a good description by <coughs> Portia. So, she gives uh, an explanation uh, about how if it were as easy to do as to know what is good and bad. So, the small churches would become chapels, means people would have become more religious. If to do were as easy as to know what were good to do, chapels had been churches, means chapels means small churches, uh, small ones would become churches, that means more people would become religious. And poor men's cottages become palaces, and poor men, after being religious, might become the owner of palaces. It is good divine that follows his own instruction. Means he is a man, that man is a priest who follows his own laws which is made by him himself. I can easily, I can from here, I can teach all 20 of you. But when I myself become one of you, that means when I become a student, it becomes tough for me even to understand. That is what she says. It is good. I can easier teach 20 what were good to be done. It's very easy to see this is good, this is bad. Huh? But when I myself be in that position to be taught, then I myself won't be able to follow my own instructions. <clears throat> the brain may devise laws. The brain may devise means make laws. But the body doesn't follow. The brain may devise laws for the blood, but a hot temper, but a young youth who is energetic, enthusiastic, that refers to youth, to skip over the meshes of good counsel. Now here there is a little bit of comparison, mesh of good counsel. Huh? <coughs> so it, it, there is a comparison, mesh is net, this is mesh. Huh? It has been compared with good counsel and person has been compared to hair. So, as the hair doesn't care of the mesh and it jumps over, so are the youth. They don't think over the laws and they don't care about what to be done and what not to be done and they become crippled as a hair which uh, 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 doesn't care of the mesh, huh? they 
jump over the mess and get harmed. That is the thing. The brain <coughs> may devise laws for the blood, but a hot temper leaps over a cold degree. Such a hair is madness in the youth. To skip over the meshes of good counsel, mesh of a good counsel, comparison, and the cripple, he becomes crippled. But this reasoning, but Posya himself, herself says, why am I giving this all these reasoning? Are they going to help me to get a good husband? Is not in the fashion to choose me a husband. Oh me, the word choose. The word choose as if she has been, uh, uh, she has been confiscated, been seized her power of choice. A very nice word, confiscated. Huh? Confiscated. Means seized. S e i z e d. Seized. Usurped. U s u r p e d. Usurped. Means taken over. So her voluntary choice. This thing has been confiscated by her father's will. Why? Be but because she cannot choose on her own whom she loves. Cannot choose. Nor she could discard or reject whom she hates. So the word choice a big question mark for her because her choice, her own desire, her own will has been confiscated, usurped, has been seized because of her father's will. What he has de devised, derived from the will, that, that's an important question in the examination also. Uh, what was the will of her father? So that's another part we shall discuss it later. <clears throat> oh me the word choose I may neither choose whom I would means I would like nor refuse whom I dislike uh, good words for dislike huh? dislike means hate abhor a b h o r abhor detest you see you increase your uh, dictionary it will be helpful in the later stage of your life. The home she <coughs> dislikes, detests or abode, she cannot uh, refuse, she cannot deny. Whom I dislike, so is the will of a living daughter, her wish, her desire. Curved, curved means shortened, lessened, reduced. There's, there are another good words for curved, reduced. Alleviate, uh, abate. These are very good words for reduce, lessen. Huh? <coughs> so is the will of a living daughter curbed by the will of a dead father. Though so the father is dead. But she has been restricted, uh, restrained, another good words for, uh, you might get prepositions, restrained from, preposition, restrained from, refrained, F-R-A-I-N-E-D, refrained from, prohibited from, you see, she cannot choose on her own. She cannot uh, desire. Her desire has been suppressed. Has been suppressed. And she cannot. It has been usurped. It has been seized. Confiscated. So, the, by the will of a dead father, it is not hard, Nerissa. 
that I cannot choose one nor refuse. It is not hard. Hard is, is in the sense means it's not easy, you see, to refuse or deny. Then <coughs> Nerissa says, your father was very virtuous and holy men at the time of death have good inscriptions. Man means at the time of death they do something good, something uh, wonderful. Therefore the lottery which has been devised by her father that he had devised made in these three chests of gold, silver and lead. Her father has said there are three chests means uh, boxes in which in one of which there is the portrait of Portia and the one who chooses the correct casket is the only uh, authorized one to marry Portia. That is her father's will. Where of who chooses his meaning chooses you means who can understand the meaning of those casket and the inscriptions written on the casket that is also an important question uh, in uh, golden casket it's written one who chooseth me shall get all he uh, deserves in silver what he desires and in lead uh, he has to risk and hazard everything so the one who understands the expression, the inscriptions which are written on each casket, he will be the right one to choose the right casket. Never be chosen by any rightly means without this authority, no one can marry you without choosing the correct casket. But one who shall rightly love, it is only who is the one who rightly means uh, surely love you, he will be the person, knowledgeable, wisdom, who will choose the right casket. But what warmth is there in your affection? What do you have any love or affection for those suitors who have come from the four corners of the world? So that's enough for today. Uh, if you have liked, it's, it's a base of the next plot followed by Shakespeare. This will give a sort of introductory one and if you are benefited and if you feel like press the like button and share among your friends and please subscribe for my channel. Thank you. Have a nice day.